The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 28th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. You send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A bit of a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 53. The S&P's up 6.5. That's about a little over one-tenth of a percent. Same for the NASDAQ, which is 25 points to the upside. Russell's down four, two-tenths. Semis are up six points. I get a little over one-tenth of a percent. You've got gold off eight bucks, four-tenths of a percent. Silver's down nine-tenths or 21 cents. Lights recruit off 53 pennies. She's trading out at 73.60. The 30-year treasury printed out 125.16. That's off 12 ticks. And got a big move inside of natural gas off. 10 cents trading out at 254. Let's begin our day by take a look at where we're at with the daily equity future contracts out here. So we're going to change screens. We'll go to our white background screen. Give me a moment. We'll get over there, and we're going to take a look at all four, the ES in the upper left, the NQ, the upper right, the Dow, lower left, and the Russell, the lower right. What you're going to see here is each of those have Rhodes Momentum indicator signals that have been triggered. The ES Mini, that's the only topping pattern that's in play. The NQ, that's the only topping pattern that's in play. The YM, the Dow Equity Future Contract, that's the only topping pattern in play. And the Russell 2000 has a A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, so bearish reversal candle there would form two different tops. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, its Equity Future Contract, it has formed a new daily profile, and that new or it's attempting to form it, and that new daily profile is below price. That's a bullish signal out there. Now, that doesn't mean that price can't uh, um, slice through those levels, but I'm just sharing with you what the um, what this new profile is indicating to you and I. Uh, a bearish reversal candle here would also confirm a Rhodes Mint indicator top. You've got your first level of support, which is the top of that new profile. It's also in change line. They're both hovering around 2058. Below that would be 2029, and below that would be 2009. A close below 2009.90 would generate a change in trend signal for the Dow or the Russell 2000 equity future contract. So that's what we're looking at as we are trading at December the 28th. Is that important? I think it's muy grande important. And we're going to show you the reasons why. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch back to that black background screen. And the reason is because I put together a little bit of a presentation. And that presentation here should get rolling here momentarily. Let me get to the proper slide. There we go. Okay. So that's what we've got. Now let me just get rid of something out here. All right. So now we take a look. Oh, why did Stevie do that? Let's try that one more time. I'm beginning. Get this out here. There we go. Okay. So now what we're going to take a look at 
the first thing we're looking at is this the S&P 500. This is its 95-year election year seasonal cycle. That means we, because it's 95 years, we have 24 combined years, and that's what this chart here represents. So over those election years, again, you've got 2020, 1996, 72, 48, uh, 16, 92, 68, 44, 12, 88, 64, 40, you get it out there. So all the election years, and what does this show us? This shows us that on average, the S&P 500 forms a top in the early part of January. That early part of January, right around really the beginning of the year, could be right out of the gate, could be that first week out there. Sometimes those tops come a tad early. That's why we're really paying attention to those roads, momentum indicator tops. Now, if, and I don't know whether or not price will follow along this analog problem, if in fact the S&P or the indices decide to follow along. This suggests that we see a nice big swoosh, Nike swoosh that is, down into the May-June time frame. And then we get one heck of a nice rally, takes us up into the early part of September, then that move lower into the October time frame, and then we get that so-called Santa Claus rally effect. Stevie doesn't start it around December, because the real rally, as you and I know, really starts around October, just as it did this year. So this is the pattern to be paying attention to, or is one thing to consider. Why is it one thing to consider? Well, how do markets during those election years form tops? That's a great question. Let's see if we can answer that question. So now we go take a look at the 2020 election year tops out there. What took place? Well, we can see that there was a TD9 top that formed on January 22nd. That led to a retracement, a move lower out there for about uh, a week and a half or so. And then we saw a rally. And that rally formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top on February the 19th. And then what did we see? We saw the markets move lower, much, much lower. Of course, we're also dealing with COVID-19 at that stage there. But we've always got something that could go to the downside. Shoot, we've got a couple of wars. we got all kinds of things out there. But this is what took place in 2020. Let's not stop there as one year, as an example, an election year, how the S&P 500 forms tops. No, we won't want to do that. We want to go back to the prior election year before 2020. That takes us into 2016. Turns out that in 2016, the actual top formed on November 3rd, 2015. That was a TD9 count top. Again, I mentioned earlier, sometimes these tops can form a little bit early. As a January uh, as January came in, we just simply saw the S&P 500 move lower into the February time frame out there. So the point here is that one of the signals that you and I pay attention to every day during the 11 to 12 o'clock, although tomorrow morning it may be between 8 and 9, I'm still waiting for confirmation. Odds favor it between 8 and 9. Am I not on the right chart? Yeah, I'm on the right chart. Okay, good. Ah, okay. Uh, Brent, we'll just have to hold here. We'll come to Brent uh, and we come back from this break here. No, I'll come back to this uh, out here. But here, if we take a look at now 2012. 2012, Rose Mentum Indicator signal on April the 2nd. And it was confirmed on May the uh, 3rd, we had that bearish reversal candle. That was the 2012 top. Again, one of Stevie's Rhodes momentum indicator patterns. In 2008, and here those blue vertical lines show us the beginning and the end of that year. Basically, the high formed on 2008 on the very first day, and it was sayonara. That's what's really called the January effect out there. 2004, we had a Rhodes momentum indicator top on January 27th, a Wave 7 top on February uh, 17th. March 8th was Rhodes Mintum Indicator top out there. These signals that you and I look at, like the Rhodes Mintum Indicator signals we're looking at right now in the daily equity future contracts, that's important to pay attention to. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, let's go out to Martinez, California and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing well, Steve. I just wanted to wish you a happy, healthy New Year and hope everything's going Thank well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Same to you and your family. Yeah, everything is good here. We're going to celebrate a very cold New Year's here. It's supposed to be in like the 50s, 60s. Uh, for me, that's absolute freezing. <laughs> I know you oh, laugh baby. at that. I know. I know. Hey, it is what it is. Just, just telling you the truth. We're wondering whether we're going to go on for New Year's Eve because it's going that's to be what so I like cool. about you, Steve. Is your honesty? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I know you called to take a look at FXI. That's one of the ETFs I believe that tracks like the China Twenty Five or something along those lines. I believe. Uh, tell us what you're doing and how I can best help you. Well, I decided to get into this. Initially, I was looking at uh, Alibaba, Baidu, some of the, the large cap China stocks, and I decided to go with this instead. Okay. Uh, just because, uh, you know, the, for my options, it was just an easier proposition, and, and the price point was much better. So my main question was, I, I have my stop in place. I'm just wondering what areas uh, to the upside does it have to clear to, you know, keep this going, hopefully. Okay, so I'd say that the first area that FXI that you would like to see it clear would be 2446. Now, that's an approximation. 2446 is what is the number right now, and that is the weekly oscillator and change line, which is red. So to me, that is one of your areas. Now, when I take a look at the monthly time frame chart, we can see that on a monthly basis, prices in essence tested that level. That level is 2490. And we've seen a high of 24.92 this month. So really 20, and then the bottom of its profile, Brent, is at 25.06. So I said 24.46, and I meant that. But now when we take a look at it, it's really 25.06. That's an area that if you can clear it, that's going to be a positive. Why? Because you'd be above the oscillator and change on the weekly. You'd back in, be back inside the profiles on a monthly time frame. And I would have to assume, let's see, at the 25.06 level, 
price would be taking on the swing point from December 15th out there. In fact, you would close above it. That high is 24.44. Now, I don't know if new profiles will form or not. Let's assume that this all plays out. Uh, the FXI continues to move higher. The place where, if this was only a counter trend move, Brent, the place or the area where this would find resistance uh, or where it would top out, and that's assuming there's no new profiles that form, would be between 2470 and 2493. And the reason is because that's a bullish structure profile. Price has been below that profile ever since it formed. Again, when a profile forms above price, that's a bearish message when a profile forms below price like the Russell 2000 equity future contract is trying to do that's a bullish message so those would be the numbers with inside of FXI before I move on does uh, any questions about that so far no that's great thank you Steve okay so then what I'm going to do folks is now I don't know Brent that this tracks either of the two um, Asian indices that I that I track out here, but I'm going to go ahead and put those up on the screen so everybody else can take a look at them. And those two being the Shanghai, that's your upper left-hand chart, and the Hang Seng. Now, with regard to the uh, Shanghai index out here, that says a nice road momentum indicator bottom. That formed on December 21st. You can see that now yesterday price just took out that red oscillator and change line. It's going to go target 313087. To any extent that the Shanghai impacts that, Brent, you'd like to see a close above 313087 from an indice standpoint. With regard to the Hang Seng, the Hang Seng out here has just generated, it has a TD9 count bottom and this morning's or last evening's action generate an A to B equals C D pattern to the upside. Its price target is around 1771 out there. So it's probably the Hang Seng that might be more impactful on the FXI. Do either of these, Brent, do you know, from an indices standpoint? I would imagine it would. Yeah, there's the, the, the big stocks that are in those indices are, of course, should have an impact. And, and, and of course, like in correlation yeah. to that, that should move that as well. Huh? So I think that's that's helpful to you or should be helpful to you that you've got those two major indices that have generated nice bottoming patterns and they're both suggesting at least a further rally. So if that's the case, I think FXI should go back and target those levels that we took a look at. But I, I keep an eye on these indices as well. And as price approaches 3130 on the Shanghai and or 1771 on the Hang Seng, or at least maybe watch the A to B equals CD pattern and see how that unfolds. So I think that's about the best help that I I can't provide to you. Is there anything else, anything on these charts that, that I can review further? No, that was fantastic, Steve. I really appreciate it. I just you hope bet. you have a great day, great weekend, and a happy new year. I will. Thanks so much, Brent, for the call. We'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. That was Brent in Martinez, California. So let's get to uh, some other requests that have come in. Otherwise, Steve is going to fall very far behind, and we don't want to do that. The first came in from John in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, SJM. <laughs> Milwaukee has a, a nice place in my heart out there. I did uh, graduate uh, from uh, Nicolay High School out there. I was there for about five months. Never actually took a class. Believe it or not, I took photography out there. They didn't know where to put me. And nobody knows where to put me. You kind of get that feel out there. But if we take a look at SJM, that's the uh, Smuckers company out there. Johnny Milwaukee is asking the question, what price would you buy for a long-term hold? He's also asking, what price would you sell if it begins failing out here? So what we know about Smuckers is it has a nice daily TD9 count top. We know that when you form a TD9 count top, that just simply says price should go ahead and pull back to support. Well, where's support? Well, you've got profile levels to take a look at, and you've got that oscillator and change on it. That's exactly what took place on the trading day of December 20th. Price pulled back. It was also with inside a bullish structured profile. So that was where you would find support as well, which it did. Now, what price was unable to do was take out the top of that profile. Turns out, John, that you have a new profile that is forming today. And that new profile is within the prior profile. The message from a profile standpoint is you should expect a consolidation. Not the ideal area, uh, if that's the pattern that plays out here, to enter either a long or a short out there. So the resistance level is up at uh, the 125 60 level and support is at 121.91. When I look at the weekly time frame chart, everything here looks hunky dory. It suggests that price wants to go deal with this gap that formed out here. This was the gap from the uh, week that uh, began on September 15th out there. The monthly time frame for Smuckers is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom uh, this month. 
This should take price up towards 133.28 to 137.65. So the daily time frame, so the weekly and the monthly look pretty good. You're looking for a long-term hold out there. Um, on a daily time frame, I would say if this is bullish, price is either going to hold this 123.76, so that could be, could be an area, or 121.91 would be a level. You asked where would you get out if it failed, I would have to say at the 121.91 level because you still have that TD9 count top. You get below that, that tells you about a change in trend and quite frankly, that would open up a move back to 109.54. I'm not saying that's where price would get to, but that's something that you have to consider. So John in Milwaukee, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that provided you with the answers you were looking for. If not, write back to me and we'll try to get to that information. Um, uh, when we get back from this break, there was a question, are the daily indices showing a top? So, and I didn't write down whose name that came from, my apologies. We'll go take a look at the daily indices out there. Remember, we looked at the four equity future contracts. Those had roads meant to indicator signals. I then took you through election year cycles, election years out there. And we just took a look at the last three or four and the types of tops that form out there. That makes this question quite important. You're right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Well, 
welcome back, folks. So the question that came in, again, I apologize. I did not write down the name. Uh, but the question was, are the daily indices showing a top? So what we've got out here are the primary indices. There's a few more that we could put out here. But you got the Dow Jones in the upper left-hand corner. The Dow Jones is in wave number 7. That's letter G. That needs a lower high to confirm that topping pattern. And a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal is present. That's the more important one. A bearish reversal candle would then generate that top. The S&P 500, the same thing. It's only topping pattern is the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal that needs a bearish reversal candle. Of course, all these need closes below those green oscillator and change lines to confirm that top at a minimum. The NDX 100 is in wave number seven, that's letter G, also a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. The Russell 2000, also Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. That needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top, as does the semis. The semis also have an A to B equals CD pattern that has not gotten to the D point of that A to B equal CD, but a bearish reversal candle here would confirm a top. The transports have not attained their one-to-one -one price projection level. I don't have any other kind of topping signal for it. Oftentimes, the transports don't really generate the same type of top that the other indices do at that same point in time. The NASDAQ Composite, wave number seven, Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal, again, waiting for a bearish reversal candle. New York Stock Exchange, the exact same thing. Its only top would be a Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal. So the answer to your question, are the daily indices showing the top? The answer to that question is yes. That makes that other portion of the presentation that we did very upfront with regard to election year cycles, what typically then unfolds, what you're looking for in each of the, what I can share with you, with the exception of that one year, uh, it might have been 2008, where just simply the high was on that first day of the year and it was sayonara, see you later, hasta la vista, baby, all those. That's the real January effect. And so we want to certainly keep an eye on, on that out there. But otherwise, all the other ones had either a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top, a TD9 count top, or a wave seven top. And in a couple instances, there were also one as I went back and took a look at them, some sell the D points. So those are the four patterns that you and I take a look at during the Trader's Ed show each and every day. Now, somebody should ask the question, well, what could get in the way of uh, the markets uh, moving lower out there? Because that's the even better question out here. And the answer to that is global capital flows. Let me show you as an example what I'm referring to. Those of you that listen to the show for a long period of time, you've, you're familiar with this. Now, this is the S&P 500. I'm just taking with the S&P 500 right now. And here I've got the S&P 500 priced in, um, what do we got? Eight different major currencies. Now, we can see that the S&P 500 has not attained yet its all-time high priced in dollars. That's actually a bullish signal. Now, it could be longer term than where we're at right now. Why? Because the way that markets top is when you see the S&P at new all-time highs in dollars, euros, yen, and pounds. Well, it turns out that we had a new all-time high last week priced in euros. We had a new all-time high last week priced in yen for the S&P 500. This week, we are at an even newer all-time high priced in Great British Pound. So the S&P 500 should get up there um, to form that top. Now, maybe it does that. Maybe we get up, we form that new all-time high, we then get that Rosemont, it's one of those topping patterns, whether it's TD9 count, Rosemont, I don't know which one it will be. I know that there's a plenty of Rosemont indicator signals that are present out there, but maybe that becomes a very significant top. But this is really what could get in the way, is international buyers. You know, if you're in Europe and you've got boots on the ground, which they do over there, you want your money to flee that country. And where is it flowing to? It's certainly flowing into the S&P 500 and the U.S. indices out there. The same thing inside of uh, Japan, the same thing inside of uh, the UK, the same thing inside of Australia out there. Now, Australia made a new all-time high priced in dollars uh, three weeks ago out there. Um, so this is what could get in the way. We'll keep this in mind as we pay attention to the patterns inside the indices out there. So I hope that answers the question with regard to what do the indices look like. They're also set up. It's kind of like a perfect storm. Usually perfect storms don't pay off, but we're going to go ahead and keep an eye on each of these out here. We'll try to do our best to uh, guide you through what the markets are communicating to us. Now let's get to some more requests that have come in. This next one coming in from Vic, who wants to take a look at coin. We're going to change screens. We'll be back to the white background screens momentarily. And here you'll see the daily, weekly, and monthly timeframes. On a daily basis, its TD9 count top was negated yesterday. Price above that green oscillator and change line, this suggests it wants higher price. A bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. 
If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it says pay attention to the daily time frame. Why? Because it's going to confirm a TD9 count top this week. Next week would complete that pattern. So keep an eye on Coinbase. The weekly and the daily are suggesting we could be near a top soon. The monthly is going to complete a TD9 count top this month, the end of December. So everything here in Coinbase is saying, be careful. It's getting ready for some type of retracement. Now, price has got to close below that green oscillator and change on the daily time frame, 17502 or right around that level right now in order to generate something other than a neutral signal if a bearish pattern confirms out here. So Coinbase looks pretty good. Uh, Vic, I hope that helps you. You also wanted to take a look at ticker symbol ALT. So let's fire up those screens and say what they're signaling to you and I. And we take a look at ALT. What we can see here is that uh, you've got a TD9 count top that is going to complete this week. What that should do is that should take price back to its oscillator and change line. That should be the minimum move. Now, the oscillator and change line currently printed at 965. Of course, you would never short a $12 stock. I'm just simply guiding you through what the charts are communicating to us. And at this stage, they're suggesting a pullback to 965. The weekly chart says, I don't know what the daily chart is even thinking about. Because what I'm thinking about is moving up to 1594. Well, maybe you're going to get both. Maybe you're going to get the TD. Well, you're going to get the TD9 count top no matter what. Now, if price closes over that high, that's assuming we don't get a new high today. Yesterday's high inside of Alt was up at the 1213 level. You close above that, 1594 is almost a certainty. Why did you say almost a certainty, Steve? Oh, you had me on certainty. Well, that's because when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, $12.38 would be where a TD9 count bottom, which it did form, would definitely find resistance. So you'd love to see it close above 1238. Still pay attention to the daily. Maybe what this is signaling to us is you're going to get this daily top. Price is going to do a pullback, test support. That green oxygen change line would be a perfect test. And then a rejection would say that this is headed higher. Off to those other lofty goals out there at the 1594 level. So, Vic, I hope that helps you out with regard to both coin and alt. Let's go take a look at the GDX for Hector and Patty. And Hector says, hey, Steve-O. On the monthly time frame or the weekly time frame, I think it was the weekly time frame. No, maybe it was the monthly. Well, on the weekly time frame, I think it was the weekly. We're going to go with weekly. Figure it out, Steve-O. On a weekly time frame, what the GDX did was it confirmed a by the D point bottom. It did that because of that Three River Morning Star. So I believe that's what you did pick out, Hector. So kudos to you on picking out that pattern. His question is, is this turning into an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside? Well, what you would need to see on the weekly time frame is you need to see a close above the December 1st high. And that high out there is at 3,191. The second thing you'd like to see is more than 133 million shares. Last week, as you moved up into that area, it was 117 million shares. This week, as you move up into that area, area it's 34 million shares even if we just divide 34 by 3 to get 10 million or so it's going to be well less than that b point of 133 million shares nonetheless if you do get a close above 3191 it will trigger an a to b equals cd to the upside steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back to finish off the gdx and look at xbi tesla sq netflix wolf eltr Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, up, folks. So we're taking a look at the GDX for Hector and Patty. The question was about an A to B equals CD pattern. We've already covered that from the weekly standpoint. On a monthly basis, things look pretty positive because price is trading above its oscillator and change line as well as the top of its profile. The daily time frame has triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Now, there's been no bearish reversal candle, but if today closes below about 3152, 3152 is back inside its daily profile and it would be below the green oscillator and change line. That would tell us that it's lost its momentum. The next level of support on the downside move is 3104. Below that is 3046, and below that is 2768 out there. So we take things one step at a time out here with regard to the GDX. But right now, it's not the A to B equals CD pendants in play. It's that daily road momentum indicator signal and its profile, so we really want to pay close attention to. So Hector and Patty, thanks so much for writing in. Uh, much appreciated. G-Man inside the Tigers that wants to take a look at XBI. He's looking for a long position for maybe about a two-week time frame. If we take a look at XBI, G-Man, you can see we are in wave number seven. That's letter G. Now, that can continue on for weeks and months. All that that needs to confirm that signal would be a lower high. You have a Rosemont indicator signal that's present. If that uh, generates a bearish reversal candle, that will confirm its top. Both of those tops here would suggest price pulling back to test support. The first levels of support are the oscillator and change line in this instance. Right now, around 87.99. That could be a buy area. The top of its daily profile, 86.79. That could be a top area. When we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is taking on its prior swing point high. Now, it's not an all-time high. No, it's not even close to an all-time high. It's just simply a high from a prior. There's two prior swing points out here. Well, I'm glad I opened up the chart. Let me get my crosshairs. So you've got a TD9 count top out here from August the 12th. The volume there was 65 million shares. You're trading into that candle right now, and you're doing it with 24 million shares. So coming in light in the loafers. We have another TD9 count top that formed out here back in May, May 26. 37 million shares there. Again, so far today, we're at 24 million shares. So price is up towards a resistance level out here. Again, that other area of resistance to the upside is at 95.18. So you want to keep an eye on that, knowing that you're coming into prior swing point with lighter volume. Again, watch for the bearish reversal candle and then the pullback. Now, what you'd also want to do out here, monthly chart, by the way, looks pretty good and suggests it wants to make a move to 101.98. So it's really the daily time frame. Now, if we look at a 30-minute chart out here, 
What we can see, G-Man, is that we have a TD9 count top. And price has lost momentum. It's now back below its oscillator and change line. This is likely to pull back to test 89.96. If you're really committed to this trade, then 89.96 would be an area for you to consider or look around. The concern is that the weekly and the daily are saying that this could be more of a top than just a short-term pullback out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at ticker symbol XBI. When I put all that together with what is perhaps going to happen come the beginning of the year, perhaps, we'll just see, um, based upon the patterns we're looking at and the seasonals out there, we might be looking more towards the downside for a good portion of the year out there. But we're going to take things one step at a time. Now let's go take a look at the request that came in from Nicholas. And Nicholas wants to take a look at Square. And the question for, from Nicholas is, is, is uh, shoot, I mean to do that, uh, is, uh, is uh, Square topping? Turns out that Square has a road's momentum indicator signal, and what it needs is a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. So it has the potential for a top. Has a top right now? No, it has not. The weekly chart is going to confirm a TD9 count top tomorrow. It'll complete that pattern on next week, and it's doing that before price gets up to its TD9 count breakdown resistance. That's at 81.47. That's ideal for a top. So the weekly says a top this week or next week. The daily says. I'm going to generate a top as soon as I get a bearish reversal candle. And the monthly chart is just kind of trading sideways. It has for over a year out here. So when we take a look at squared, to answer your question, is it topping? It's giving us those topping signals and hasn't confirmed that on the daily time frame. And that's what you'd really be looking for there. And then you'd be looking for a close below the oscillator and change line at 79.11. And they'd be having targets of 71.11, 68.48, and 66.73. Nicholas would also take, like to take a look at ticker symbol W-O-L-F. So let's go take a look at it, see what it is signaling to us, and Stevie doesn't have it. It must have been Netflix that somebody had requested. So and I didn't get to... That's weird. So let me get back to Wolf. Out here, let me just put this in where the square uh, files are. And then I think somebody put Netflix and I screwed that up somehow. But we'll go take a look at it. I'm assuming somebody asked for Netflix. I wouldn't have had it in there otherwise. Now we take a look at Wolf. His question is, is this shortable? Well, the topping pattern that you have out there is wave number seven. Looks like that's going to be confirmed today. So is it shortable? Yes, you have a topping pattern. Uh, or it looks like you have a topping pattern. Now, what price first needs to do is close below the top of its profile. That's its first level of support, 45.27. The next level of support is at 44.60, the green oscillator and change line. And then below that, now, you, oh, whoa, 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 you've got a new profile out here. Okay, so 44.60. Uh, I, I was correct on the 45.72, then 44, and then the final level of support would be at 42.29. If you close below 42.29, on a daily basis, you get a change in trend signal. The weekly time frame chart remains bullish. Price above profile, above the oscillator and change line. The monthly chart out here is what? I don't have anything other than price trying to get back inside this profile, which will be accomplished if price closes above 44.68 come uh, tomorrow out there. And you're at 45.24 right now. So you got a little bit of um, differing signals out here, but the daily's in control because the weekly and the monthly are suggesting that they're not ready to top. You really want to see price first get below that oscillator and change line. And then second, take out 42.29. But those are the signals that I see when I take a look at WOLF, Nicholas. I hope that that helps you out. I believe somebody put in a request to take a look at Netflix. We're going to take a look at Netflix. TD9 count top that formed a few days ago. Bearish reversal candle as well. That's a shooting star. That confirmed a Rhodes Minton indicator top. That was on December 20th. Now, what price has been doing is been oscillating back and forth of that oscillator and change line. But if it can remain below it, it being 493.28 right now, that should open up the door for a move back to the 459.83 to 457.21 area. You're gonna you have a completed TD9 count top that took place last week. Price should target 469.94. The monthly chart is trying to form an A to B equals C to the upside. The price level it needs to take out to do that is up at 485 even Steven. That had 168 million shares. This month we're up here with 76 million shares. So even if we get a close above it, it being 
485 even, Stephen. We're trading above that right now. You'll get an A to B equals CD powder. Won't be confirmed. Doesn't mean it won't uh, reach uh, fulfill that. But first, we're getting signals here that price should pull back and at least test that weekly oscillator and change line. Right now, printing about 469.94. Whoever wanted Netflix. Uh, the next request, I believe that came in, was from, well, wasn't there, was from Duncan Steve. Boy, I really screwed this up, didn't I? Um, okay, let's go back to the beginning. And let's take a look at Palantir. P-L-T-R is the uh, ticker symbol. Now, this is actually working out pretty good because it looks like I've gotten through pretty much everything. So Palantir, Dunk, uh, you're down below its red oscillator and change line. That's bearish. It suggests lower price. That's the daily time frame. The weekly, so far, it's holding profile support. If you get it closed below, this is tomorrow, a closed below 1757, that's going to offer to you a lower price, with 1623 being the likely price target. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. .com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Palantir out here. And the only other thing, really, Duncan, that I can add to this is, you know, what's holding price up at this stage here has been that gap to the upside, wide-ranging bar. Uh, accelerating volume from November the 12th. That had volume out there of 170 million. As an example, as prices pulled back, it pulled back on December the 6th with 96 million shares. It pulled back again on December 20th with 58 million shares. But if that level fails, 
uh, you're likely going to go back and actually completely fill that gap out here. But right now, as long as price stays above that weekly uh, profile resistance level, that's a bullish uh, signal out there. And again, that level is at 1757. To finish out the show, we're going to go over to Europe and take a look at the euro. This is for Peter in Park City. And we take a look at the euro. So what I want to, you to take a look at, I am not in the camp just yet that the dollar is getting ready to fall apart. I think it could actually trick a whole lot of folks out there. Yeah, there's the A to B equals CD pattern, but most people don't follow the Rose Mintum indicator signal. And that's present when we take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Well, what's going on with the euro? Because the euro represents 58% of that. Turns out that the euro, which had a beautiful TD9 count bottom back here, back on October 6, is now taking on its TD9 count breakdown resistance. This is the weekly time frame. And that's at 1.1065. Peter, watch that price level come tomorrow. If price does not take that out, that's where rally would typically end and that would say that maybe this a to b equals cd pattern that stevie has drawn in here is not going to come to fruition and that is really what the daily time frame chart is suggesting to you and i is that is a real possibility watch for some type of bullish reversal candle inside the daily time frame in the u.s dollar index if you get that you're going to head higher. It's going to head higher out there. Metals will likely head lower. And as we talked about earlier, there's already a TD9 count top that's present inside of Goldilocks. So those are the things to look at. Of course, we're going to be taking a look at the early part of January. At this stage here, the way the charts are set up, all kinds of tops are out there. Whether we look at the indices, now I say all kinds. All kinds of roads, momentum indicator tops are present out there. They still need confirmation. And if we get confirmation, well, that's going to be our signal. Go ahead and short the indices out here with the caution that global capital is still flowing to the U.S. And it could negate all this wonderful technical analysis. Folks, I hope to see you tomorrow. Probably will be recording from 8 to 9 possibly from the normal time frame. Have a terrific Thursday. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Take care, folks.